Hi, I'm Mike. I'm going to be doing the a week by week breakdown of the series The Sopranos. This is episode one, the pilot. So let's just get into it. The the the, uh, the cast. The most likable person on the entire show is a sociopath, Tony Soprano. The rest of it, the rest of the cast on this particular episode, I did not like or care for. His wife is unlikable. His son is unlikable. His daughter is unlikable. Polly, maybe the one of the best guys on the show, had almost no lines this particular episode. Uh, his uncle Junior is grumpy, and his f- best friend Artie Bucco is whiny, and uh, Chris, his nephew Christopher is entitled. So, most likable guy on the show is a sociopath, and I am a big fan of these series with antiheroes. They always, even though they do bad things, they always have a certain likability about them. Tony Soprano, me, at least starting off in the pilot, has the most is the most likable out of any sociopath or antihero I've seen on television. I just I don't want to break down the whole thing for you, but I'm going to just talk about a few things that stood out to me while watching the show. Now I've seen the show once before, out of order. I I came in late on its first run. I saw the last season first, and then I went back and watched uh, the rest. So this is my first time trying it from beginning to end. So spoilers ahead. I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I'm going to talk about a little bit of what stood out to me. One of the first things that stood out to me was uh, the dynamic between Tony and his nephew, Christopher. It was, it, I like the, these types of shows that always have these types of dynamics, like The Shield with Vic and Shane or the or, uh, Breaking Bad with uh, Walt and Jesse, because it's always this father, son, older brother, little brother type relationship that eventually over the course of the series also always breaks down and ends badly. But this was good right here. Uh, Christopher being an entitled young guy with a nice car, not wanting to go to work, having excuses for why he hasn't done the things he's supposed to do. It was all, all very good. Uh, Tony's dynamic with his wife. Like I say, she's unlikable. She's whiny. There's one point where Tony has a, an MRI or a CAT scan after he's had, uh, after he's passed out and there he's looking for a little positivity and she's pretty much telling him the difference between you and i when i when we die is I, i'm going to heaven and you're going to hell well what, what do you say after that like my first thought was like i think i'd rather spend a lifetime in hell than a lifetime with her uh what else was covered on the show the uh, i did have one problem knowing the carmela character in the very listen when you do a pilot or a first episode or you're starting out, you know, you don't really have a jive or a feeling for every character, but there's a scene where Carmilla hears a noise outside and pulls out an AK 47 in front of, in front of a house guest. I, I didn't, her character wouldn't have done that later in the series. Again, they're just trying to figure out who she was, but I felt that was very much against her character. I did enjoy the plot point of Tony Soprano being obsessed with ducks that were in his pool and then being brought to tears when they, they when they left because it represented him losing his family and knowing what happens later in the show. It's really good for foreshadowing and a building block for the rest of the series. Uh, the, uh, the soundtrack was very good. I, I particularly enjoyed the scene where Tony Soprano was chasing down this guy that owed him money. Uh, the uh, what else was there? I'm sorry about all this. The, I, I, I enjoyed the, the familial dynamics with Tony and his mother, although I thought it was weird if Tony knew anything about his mother when he brought her like uh, CDs and a radio and expected her to dance. This old woman was miserable as could be. She, this old woman wasn't dancing anywhere. And so and there was another scene with her that I found really interesting with uh, with Tony and, and his uncle Junior because old people being the way old people are, Uncle Junior was very grumpy and snap and just and snaps at Tony talking about how many times he took him to to baseball games. And it's just, it's reminiscent of something, an argument I would have with an older relative of mine where they're not getting their way and they just snap and, and name the most mundane thing they did for you and just be angry and, and bitter. Also a scene with Uncle Junior is later in the, in the episode with him and Tony's mother, and they're in the car, they're driving. And a lot, a lot of it feels like 
these two old timers are plotting against Tony, which which isn't uncommon. A lot of times old timers talk to each other and, and bitch and moan about the kids or the younger generation. It's just this has a different feel to it because we're talk they're talking about a mob boss and things needing to be done. And Junior talking about how people they know want want Junior to take over, which I don't think. It, that's not a conversation that happened at all. Junior's lying and Junior's having delusions of grandeur. Uh, so all in all, I thought this was a really, a really good episode. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. It was good. It was a good pilot. Sometimes pilots can be miss, hit or miss. I enjoyed it. I'd give it a seven out of 10. If you're going to go back and, re- and rewatch the show, I, I highly recommend it. Or if you've never seen the show, I highly recommend it. I uh, apologize if I was kind of all over the place. It's just, it is what it is. This was my review. I'll be back with a a review next week of the show. And in between then, I will have a movie review of the movie Marnie from Alfred Hitchcock, which I'm looking forward to seeing. I've never seen before. So thank you for checking this out. Please like or subscribe if you liked what you saw, if you hated what you saw. Uh, sorry. Uh, talk to you later.